Welcome back. I'm Connie Carroll sitting in again for Ken Goldenberg while he's on vacation. And we have some wonderful guests with us today. We have Daphne Lay and Gary Busby with us from University of California School of Arts. It's the Claire Trevor School of the Arts. Yes, it is. And you are going to talk to us today about a wonderful performance coming up this month. Absolutely. We have a great show coming up called Chang I Dream of Chang and Ang by Philip Ken. Philip Ken? Mm -hmm. Philip Ken Gotanda, oh. who is a professor at UC Berkeley. Oh, my. Yeah, so it's the Southern California premiere. And Chang and Ang are? Chang and Ang are the original Siamese twins. Oh, my goodness. Uh, that for we're from whom we get the name Siamese twins because they were born in Siam. And they became, well, Daphne, you tell them. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So um, my job for this performance is uh, I'm, I'm the dramaturg, which means I'm do, I do the research oh, for yes. uh, the show. So Chen and Anne, they were, uh, they were actually mixed race. They were, their father um, was Chinese, mm -hmm. their mother was Chinese and Malay. They grew up in Siam, Thailand. <laughs> uh, they came to the States in 1829. Oh my. Um, so just imagine this. this. They were the first, one of the first Chinese in this country. Conjoined twins. Conjoined yes. twins and Chinese Just immigrants. Chinese immigrants. Chinese immigrants. Because, oh. because the gold rush started in 1850. Yes. That's where, when we had the first wave of Chinese immigrants. This was like two decades before that. Yes. So the amazing thing about their life is there was no ready-made stereotype about Asian people at all, and then they were the first. <laughs> and then they were freaks or, you know, whatever way that people look at them, mm -hmm. but not through the racial lens. So I think that was really refreshing when we think about that. Yes. Yeah. So in the show, we learn about Chang and Eng, and we learn about their personalities, which it sounds like they had, they were entertainers. Oh, they were, they were big entertainers. They worked for P.T. Barnum. I mean, they were also great businessmen. Oh. Uh, they worked for P.T. Barnum. Oh, the best. The best. show on earth. Exactly. <laughs> all that stuff. And then they figured out that they could make more money presenting themselves. So they bought out their contract and separated from Barnum. The biggest show on earth, the greatest show on earth, exactly. and they bought out their contracts? Exactly, and then they toured all over America mm -hmm. and Europe and everything else, and they met their wives in L America, London. Oh, in the U.S. In the U.S., North yeah. Carolina. Oh in North Carolina. Yeah. And they settled next to one another in what plantation side by side. Oh. And by the end of their lives, of course, they hated each other. And so, <laughs> but how many children did they have? They had 21 children together. Between them. 21 yeah, children. Yeah, there's some, there's some racy parts of this show. It's This is, you know, it gets a little they you know, are very steamy. Uh, yeah, they are, they are very attractive people. And very enigmatic. Very much. Sure? And then apparently, well, they are very smart too. Apparently they learned English just, you know, on the voyage to the U.S. for four, four months. Oh my they goodness. Learned how to learn, they learned how to speak English. But the interesting part is that's the sailor's English. So we show that in the show. It's really, really funny the way. So there's some salty language. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. In this show. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. But you know, to think about this, we're speaking of these two men as if they are great entertainers and great businessmen, but it's all, you don't even notice the fact that they are conjoined twins. They right. must have had all kinds of obstacles. Oh, absolutely. Of course. And it's been interesting with our two actors who are, uh, one is, uh, one of the actors is Vietnamese and the other actor is uh, from Sing Hong Ta Kong. Yes. Taiwan. Oh. Taiwan. And, but they are, they have been spending so much time together because you can imagine, it, imagining that, mm -hmm. well, not even rehearsing, they have to, I told them a long time ago, you have to feel like brothers. Mm -hmm. You must sort of know each other in the way that brothers would know each yes. other. So they have been hanging out and they have become to develop one another's sort of personality traits, which <laughs> has been wonderful to see. Mm -hmm. They're both wonderful undergrad students mm -hmm. and Aww. it's great to have them with and us. And unlike Chang and Ng, these two actors probably still get along. Yes, they yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. they so far, so we, far. <laughs> we haven't gotten to opening night yet. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. yeah. So in, in the show, are these two actors in a costume that makes them look like conjoined twins? Yes, they are. Oh, yeah. we, we've created a prosthesis that uh, binds the two of them together yes. and they were joined at the it's interesting because they could have easily been separated but that nobody knew how to do it at the time mm -hmm. oh. so uh, but after a while they you know that became their 
their MO. Yes, so. their brand and exactly. their, their identity. Exactly. Mm -hmm. right. so, um, and their business. Right. Exactly. Absolutely, yeah. totally. As you can see from the image on the screen, um, uh, that's where they were joined at the, at the rib. So oh we've created a prosthesis that puts the two of them together. And they've had to, you know, figure, watching them in rehearsal, trying to figure out where does the arm go and <laughs> how do I, so, and sitting up, sitting down, all of that stuff. And these two actors are students, so they have to go to class still. They have to make yeah. great. And mm -hmm. then they got to put on the costume mm -hmm. and exactly. get around the stage. Yeah, <laughs> and the way our director, Ricardo Rocha, who is uh, one of our PhD students yes. and a professional actor and a director, uh, has staged it. It's sort of like a backstage drama in that the, the actors never get off stage. Oh, my goodness. And so you're seeing there's the backstage and the forestage, and so it's sort of one of those kind of like okay. almost a rom com type of situation. It's hard enough to be on stage for an entire performance, but if you're connected to another person mm -hmm. yeah. on yeah. stage it's for true. the show, it's probably an hour, two hours. It's about a two hour show. Yeah. About a two hour show. Yeah. <laughs> These guys should get an award. This I know. Year. I think, I'm hoping. I'm hoping that they will. It's been great, and they're wonderful young young men. Well, that's wonderful. We also have grad actors who are playing some of the other roles. Yes. And so it's a nice mix, a nice ethnic mix. Of One undergraduate of the and graduate uh, actors. And graduate actors, absolutely, and a graduate director. And we also have two twin boys who are in the scene uh, uh, during their childhood oh from the community. Oh my goodness. Yes. How, how is the casting trying to find the, the twin boys? We just you know, <laughs> advertise it. Yeah. And in, there are these twin boys who live in University Hills, yeah? Not in University Hills, but very close by. Uh -huh. oh, so and how are they doing with the costuming and, and the, the constraints of being in the roles? The, well, luckily their scenes are very short, so yes. and they the the prosthesis can be separated yes. so that they don't have to be stuck mm -hmm. together the whole time that they're. <laughs> and how old are these two actors? Eleven. Eleven. Oh, good. Right. So Ricardo doesn't have to have that many babysitters on. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because I have a young young son and he's yeah. climbing my door jams. I can't imagine that oh, happening during yeah. rehearsal. <laughs> no. Daphne was saying that they're very well behaved boys. Right. So. <laughs> That's wonderful. So we all can expect that during the performance as yeah. well. But this is such an interesting show. Tell me, with, you know, with this kind of storyline and all of the things about the story of these two men that you've just brought out in, this, in our talk today, what have you learned, Gary, through the process of seeing this staged and, and come to life? Well, I think one of the things that Daphne and I were just talking about is it's called I Dream of Chang'anang. And, yes. and so it's, it's several layers of dreams. It's Chang'anang's dream mm -hmm. to make something of themselves. It's sort of the quintessential American dream that they realized. Uh, they came from nothing, a very yes. poor existence, and became very wealthy landowners Oh, they did. In the yes, South. of course. They had plantations, right. uh, yes. Exactly. Um, it's also sort of the author's dream about what would you say, Daphne? Maybe? Like a collective uh, Asian American dream, and also a collective dream for Asian American actors, because you can imagine they are the first Asian American actors. They were yes. superstars. In yeah, their they day. were. They were oh. the most seen, you know, 19th century entertainers. So imagine an Asian American actor today. Mm -hmm. It was very hard. It's very hard for them to be cast, um, to be on stage, to, yes. to be in movies. So in a sense, this is a. Every, every Asian American actor's dream. Yeah. <laughs> Very much a pioneering experience yeah. and role. Yeah. And then Daphne, for you, what yeah. has it brought to light in, for you as a learning experience as you've seen the show get up and running? Um, well, this is a show, I, this is a play. Um, I met a director, I mean, I, I met a um, playwright and he showed me this, this play. And I was just fascinated by it. And just with you know, all the things we just said, this kind of collective, collective dream to yes. think about the first Asian American actors. Yes. And they were casting this light that is like a freak show. <laughs> right? On the other hand, they were very, very popular. They were very, very attractive. And then they, um, yeah, they are very famous. And then they are, they are as scary said, you know, the American dream. Yes. Right. So for me, it's really through more research and research and research, and then actually um, advocate for the for this play for our department to put on this play and to go through the rehearsal with them. It's just wonderful to see how the actors grow and to see how the actors really um, understand the multicultural society, right? Because this is a this is a show with uh, with diversity actors. Yes. And the director, in order to sort of um, emphasize this idea, we actually inserted some uh, Chinese lines 
in it. So a lot of people in the show, even though they are not Chinese, they are speaking one line of Chinese. So, so that, through that learning experience, you, everyone needs to experience what it feels like to live in a daily life in your second language, your second culture, and, and all that. These yeah. are big, moving themes. Yeah. And then it gets presented with two guys who are consummate entertainers. They're right. funny. They've yeah. got kind of salty language. Right. You've got to tell me, this sounds like a great show. Now let's talk about where the show is. When, when is the show being put, uh, performed? Um, April 29th mm -hmm. through May 7th. Okay. And it's yeah. in the Robert Cohen Theater in, and in the Claire Trevor School of the Arts, which is the theater right on Mesa Road. It's right across from the Bren Center, Wonderful. so you can't miss it at all. And it's a lovely little black, spot, black box theater named for our founding chair, Robert Cohen. That's wonderful. It sounds like a nice, intimate setting to it experience is. the show. Yeah. So a it's a lot of show for a very small space. So <laughs> yeah. there, like a there will be a, I mean, you're, the audience is up close and personal, <laughs> you know, especially you in some of the love scenes. So don't bring your, don't bring your, your young child to this one. <laughs> but, bring, yeah, but bring a, bring a buddy from Laguna. Exactly. Village, Absolutely. Yeah. I and think adults can handle it. Oh, I think so. And you have eight performances. Yes, we do. So you do have some matinees that mm -hmm. we can enjoy. Yes, mm -hmm. actually, the first weekend and the second weekend. Oh, yeah. terrific, mm -hmm. terrific. So uh, now tell me, just getting to the theater, I'm sure many people are very familiar with where the, where the Robert Corn Theater is. Right. But maybe you could just tell us from Laguna Woods Village, how is it to get to the theater? It's the easiest to, to get off, um, take the 405, uh -huh. take to University, mm -hmm. turn left on University, take that all the way to Mesa Road, turn left, and you pull into the Mesa parking structure and then cross the street, Mesa Road right there, and the Robert Cohen Theater is right there. Oh, that's fantastic. It's very simple. I, I do love hearing that. It's nice to know that it's an easy, sometimes when the theater is on a campus, yeah. you might have mm -hmm. a little bit of a walk, but right. this sounds like it's a very simple way to it get is. in. It's yeah. a very easy one to get to. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, we have to come and see you. It is April 29th through May 7th, and you must come and see this show. It sounds like a blast. <laughs> bring somebody, you know, bring somebody to be fun to hang out with for this wonderful experience. Absolutely. And thank you. Thank you, Gary and Daphne, for Thank being you. with us today. Thank you for we having love us. love hearing you. about what the students are doing at the school and the great performances that you have. Thank you so much. And stay with us because coming up next from the American Parkinson, uh, uh, dis sorry, American Parkinson Disease Association, we have Janelle Pomeroy and Larry Strauss to come and talk to us about a wonderful benefit that they are putting on. So come back and see us right after this. Mm -hmm. 